Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have another episode in our Spoiler Spotlight series in which I talk about, well, spoilers and tell you what my thoughts are on them. But before that, just a quick reminder to please click subscribe if you enjoy these videos. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers and it means the world to me. Much appreciated. And today we're going to be talking about our newest spoiler from March of the Machine, and that is the first of the battle cards. We have Invasion of Sendikar. For three colorless and one green, it's a battle siege. And it says, as a siege enters, choose an opponent to protect it. You and others can attack it. When it's defeated, exile it, then cast it transformed. It also has a triggered ability that says, when Invasion of Zendikar enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. The other side after it transforms is a 4-4 creature with Vigilance and Haste, which is a land in addition to its other types, and it taps to add one mana of any color. So this is super interesting. We finally kind of know what battles are, and I say kind of because this is a siege, and it seems very likely that there's going to be other types. So we only really know what sieges do, and not even that necessarily, because we don't even know if they'll all be double-sided. We're assuming that they are but we're not necessarily certain about that just yet. This has been spoiled early, but we're probably going to get the primer on the set's mechanics in the next day or two from Wizards of the Coast, so we won't have too long to speculate. In any case though, I'm going to try to speculate away. So the card has a number three in the bottom right corner. That, I think, are the points that it can take from attacks. Now there are two possibilities here. One is that this is a loyalty system, a little bit like Planeswalkers, so it's defeated after that number reaches zero. The other possibility is that you need to attack it three separate times during three separate turns, which I think is a little bit less likely, but could be possible depending on the situation. If it's the first case and this is the number of hits this can take, then this is a very powerful card if you can immediately kill it and you're ahead on board. Because you're going to get an explosive vegetation effect no matter what when this enters the battlefield, that's already fine for four mana. And then if you spend at least three damage to transform it, you're going to get a third land which also happens to be a 4-4 into the mix, which is incredibly solid. So that's obviously very strong. The thing that has me a little bit confused is the fact that it says others can attack it. So in a multiplayer game, that means that any player can attack this. However, if I'm understanding it correctly, and I'm pretty sure I am, then this is only ever going to be under the control of the player who played it. So your opponents can't really reap that much benefit, which makes it a bit odd that there's the option for them to attack it too. I suppose it can be a kind of political situation, or maybe there are going to be some battles in which it might be good for your opponents to attack them. They might get stuff by attacking. I'm not entirely sure, but it's interesting that it has that clause, and it certainly makes it a little bit more interesting about what this may actually be. The other thing we should talk about is if this is a siege one, what can the other ones be? Well, there may be some in which you're the defender instead of the attacker that could function a little bit like enchantment effects. Say, for example, a glorious anthem that has that number at the bottom, and when that number is depleted, it sacrifices itself. You could have something like that, and that would mean that you're the one who is interested in protecting it, so you're going to try to stop your opponent from hitting you. In either case, I can't really shake the feeling that these cards could just have been enchantments. So I think it could have been worded as an enchantment that comes in with three counters on it, and whenever you deal one damage to your opponent, you remove one counter. It basically would have achieved the same thing. So I'm not entirely sure why this specific kind, the Siege, needs to have its own card type other than for the sake of novelty, which is, to be honest, how I've been feeling about a lot of WotC mechanics lately. There's stuff that doesn't really need to be keyworded or named. They're just very basic stuff that could be done with card types that we already have existing. But this kind of builds a bit more suspense and gives a bit more excitement to the new set. I will say, however, that I am super, super excited to see some of these other battles because I love the fact that we're going to get little snippets of almost every plane that we've been to in the last few years. And we're even going to get some planes that I absolutely love, like Alara and Lorwyn, which we haven't visited in years. And I can't wait to see how they translate to these cards, even if they only appear for like two cards of the entire set. That's going to make me very happy. So I am quite excited in that sense. So there you have it. That has been our card spotlight for today. What are your thoughts on this card? Let me know in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!